The cycling physiology test is a two-part test which gives us lots of information about your physiology and why you're performing as you are and it allows us to give you advice on your training. We measure your VO2 max, the greatest amount of oxygen you're able to take in and use and also your maximal aerobic power output. So those two variables act as a ceiling on your fitness and then we will also look at your submaximal physiology, so your, where your thresholds lie, uh, to see how much of your maximal physiology you're able to comfortably sustain. We use a SRM ergometer for you to perform the test on, gold standard piece of kit that allows you to uh, adjust all of the bike settings to be as close as possible to your bike at home. Also allow you to bring in your pedals, your own handlebars or your own saddle, whatever makes you feel most comfortable on the bike. The first part of the test is the max test. You'll start off at a nice easy power output and it will go up gradually uh, so that eventually you can not maintain your cadence and you push yourself to max. You'll be wearing a face mask so that all the air you breathe out goes into our online gas analyzer so we can see how much oxygen you're using and you'll also be wearing a heart rate monitor so we can get a measure of your maximal heart rate. Keep pushing, keep working. The purpose of the max test is to gather information on your maximum amount of oxygen you can consume and use which is your VO2 max, your max heart rate, as well as your maximum aerobic power. At the end of the max test, we'll take a blood sample from your earlobe. That's to assess your maximal blood lactate values to see how high you're able to push that during that test. We'll then also give you a 10 minutes just easily running through on the bike, basically trying to get your blood lactate levels to get back to a normal baseline level before we start the next submaximal test. The second part is the submaximal test and you will start off at 40% of your maximal power output that you achieved in the max test and it will go up by 7% each stage after that. So there are up to seven stages and if you do all seven you'd be finishing on 82% of your max power. So basically starting off nice and easy, finishing off fairly hard and at the end of each stage we would ask you to tell us how hard you felt that stage was, your rating of perceived exertion and we would also take a small blood sample from your earlobe. So the submac test, via all the measures that we do during the test, allows us to create the lactate thresholds, your first and your second threshold, then allows us to understand how you perform at different intensities below your max, and therefore how we can build training zones around that. We can do an adapted protocol for people who are training for long endurance events. Basically it's very similar, but the stages are slightly longer and that allows us to see how much fat and carbohydrate you're using. For example, in an Ironman, if you're not taking on enough carbohydrates, then you will run out of energy, particularly when you've got the run afterwards. You need to make sure you're fueling optimally on the bike. Understanding how much fat you use is really useful because in a long endurance event, you will be relying mainly on fats as a fuel. And if you can optimise how much fats you use, particularly around race intensity, then that will really help improve your performance. After your visit, you'll get a bespoke report that will give you all the numbers from your test as well as focusing in on what your strengths and weaknesses are. So if you've got a particular target that you're wanting to achieve, we can have a look and see whether your physiology will allow you to do that or whether you need to make changes to your physiology. Uh, we'll be able to give you advice on specific training sessions to do to target those particular aspects of physiology. We'll also include a table of training zones in the report based on your physiology and have power output and heart rate and also perception of effort. So if you don't have a power meter or a heart rate monitor, you can still use that information to make sure you're training at the right intensities. So the benefits of doing a cycling physiology test is that it takes the guesswork out, out of training, allows you to be confident that the training you're doing is going to help you improve. People spend a lot of money on bikes and cycling kit and so on, so in the greater scheme of things a physiology test is quite a small um, investment, but in getting your training right will make a massive difference. Coming and getting a physiological assessment and understanding that and then building your training around that can lead you, you know, to maximise anything that you're doing on the bike and make sure that you're really getting the most out of your time, your effort, everything that you're putting into your cycling.